right. Well, I'll introduce us and then we'll get started. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, there's a lot of DCS staff here, but three of us are going to sort of take the lead on this. Um, I'm Lindsay Masenzio. I'm the speech pathologist at Discovery, one of the speech pathologists at Discovery. We also have Alyssa Lindstrom. She's our visual arts teacher. And Allison Deacon, she's a second grade special education teacher. Um, and we have a few, um, we're going to share a PowerPoint with you um, and discuss a few different types of technology that you have probably been using the last few weeks. Um, feel free to type any questions you have into the chat box, and then we'll also have a time for questions and answers at the end. Um, but hopefully along the way, we answer a lot of your questions um, and we'll get started. And as we go, we will show you where the chat box is. So if you don't know where that is yet, don't panic. That is one of the things that we are going to show you. Yes, yeah, so just jot down on a sticky note, like in real life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the first things, Lindsay, sorry, I'm just going to jump in. Um, that we kind of wanted to talk about is, we you know, it's a little crazy because of all of the platforms um, that we are currently using. So we are going to hit on the main ones tonight. We're going to talk about Zoom, uh, Google Classroom, and uh, the Remind app. But we just, oh, hang on one second. I'm going to let in a couple more parents. All right. There we go. All right. Thank you, everyone who is joining us. We just got started. Ms. Lindstrom is just going to jump in and talk about our platform. So we have quite a few different platforms. Um, I know some classrooms are still using Class Dojo. If they had already used it, um, Kindergarten is using Class Tag. Um, I'm using Art Sonia for artwork for students, um, and we've been putting things on Facebook. So we know it's a lot. Um, we're gonna hopefully help answer some of the questions about a lot of these tonight and give you um, some rundowns. Um, but if we don't answer something about one of the ones listed, and like Lindsay said, if you have a question about it, just let us know. Um, within grade levels, some classrooms might be using additional like educational websites, um, things like that just as supports while we're at home. Um, so there might be some other ones that you've seen or um, have popped up um, and hopefully we can answer questions on that, but that might have to go to the classroom teachers. So Zoom, we have all made it into Zoom tonight, so that's a great. <laughs> Uh, first step, but we know there's a lot in Zoom, and so we kind of want to give you um, two quick little rundowns. So we have two videos to show you tonight um, of us kind of walking through how to get onto Zoom because we know, depending on how your teacher um, has been providing you the information, there can be some different ways. Um, so if a classroom teacher gives you a link, and says, click to join the link. I'm gonna show this video. Oops. Oh. If your teacher provides you a Zoom link, you don't have to have a Zoom login in order to use it. You can just click the link and it'll probably bring you to the screen. When you get to this screen, you have two options. If you've downloaded the Zoom app onto your computer, you can click the openzoom.us. But if you don't want to, you can hit cancel and just click here to do it right in that internet screen. So I just wanted to clarify that. So I have mine downloaded on my computer. So always make sure that your student, your child is clicking join with video. And then it'll always take you to a waiting room. This is a new security that Zoom has put on, just so that outside people cannot come into the Zoom meeting. 
the teacher will allow the students into the Zoom meeting like we did tonight once they are ready. And then also make sure that you're clicking join with audio because if you don't do join with audio, then the teacher and student cannot hear each other. So that's really important. Now, if you don't have the link, if a teacher gives you what's called a meeting ID and a password, this is how you're gonna get onto it. Is you there a way to expand that, Ms. Lindstrom? Oh yeah, sorry, thank you. You can actually go right to the Zoom website and the Zoom website is very simple. It's just zoom.us. Oh yes, we can definitely talk about it from the phone too. Um, zoom.us and then right at the top, it says join a meeting. So again, this is a great way if you don't want to set up or don't have a chance to set up a login, you can just go right to join a meeting. And then it'll ask for the meeting ID, which I'm gonna show you. I have to go back to my email to get that number. It's always a number. And then you type it in. And then again, you can choose to either open the Zoom app or launch it right in the browser. And then now for the extra security, it may ask for a password. It's also a number, most likely. And then hit join. Again, make sure you do join with video. You'll kind of be in the waiting room until a teacher lets you in. and then join with audio. There we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to clarify too, the passwords can be words too. And you'll just say password and then whatever it is. I know that we're trying, or a lot of us are trying to simplify the passwords. So they're not like long number sequences. So for our class, we usually do like one, two, three, four. So just look for wherever it tells you the password. And I know that it, in the past, a lot of classrooms have used one link or one ID and password consistently. That may change because if we use a different link or different ID and password each time, it becomes more secure. So you may see teachers starting to do that. So just be careful that if the ID changes and the password changes, you're keeping track of the right one. Hopefully you're getting those from either Google Classroom or one of the other platforms like Dojo or uh, remind or class tag each day. Um, and you can get on Zoom on a phone um, or a tablet as well. Um, if you are getting on your phone, um, you can download the Zoom app and go through the same process. So can you see this? It's pretty much the same. You just type the meeting ID in there and press join. I know that's blurry, but it literally looks almost the same as when you join on the computer and the same for the Zoom website. It's almost identical to the computer website. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just really important to help your students make sure they remember to click join with audio so that we can hear them. Um, and also, one of the other things that we're adding in is a security teachers might start to lock the zoom meeting which means after they've locked it nobody else can come into the meeting so this is just going to help to make sure that again strangers or people don't come into the meeting um so you might like if you're running late that morning and you know your son or daughter is a few minutes late to crew. Um, I think teachers are doing a good job of waiting a little bit to let everybody in. But if you get if you get denied in, the teacher might just have locked the meeting so that people can't join anymore. The other thing you'll notice, like if you look at the top of the screen now, is that teachers are going to be recording all the meetings again, just for safety and security, just like this one is now. Yes. Um, so the next thing we wanted to show you are some of the features in Zoom. Um, we know that 
um, the teachers are using a lot of the features and asking students to use a lot of the features. So we're going to show you some of the things that you can do in Zoom. So at the bottom, there is on the very bottom left, you can see on my screen, there is the mute icon. When it has a red line through the mute icon, the speaker cannot hear um, the student anymore. You can still hear the speaker though. Um, and it also is, there is also a blue mute button in the upper right hand corner of each of your own little pictures. Now, sometimes I'm gonna pause this for a second. Ah, it's hard to tell which one's video. Um, <laughs> sometimes the teacher may mute the whole class. And a lot of teachers are gonna have their video set up so that the students come in muted. That way there's no background noise. Um, we can hear everything on Zoom. It really picks up a pretty big um, span of noises. <laughs> so, um, which is great, we can hear the kids, um, but we can also hear a lot of other things going on in the house. So a lot of times we will mute everybody just so that students can focus on the teacher and hear what's going on. Um, all right, and then next to the mute button is the video. So if you click the video and it has the red line through it, the video will turn off, as you can see on mine up here, and then you click it and it comes back on. Now, right at the bottom in the middle, there are a lot of other icons. An important one is the chat. So within the chat, you can open it up. Now, there's two things. You can either type to everyone or you can type to specific people in the Zoom meeting and only they see it. That's really important to remind people that you want to make sure you're you know who you're talking to. You're talking to everyone or um, one specific person. It'll pop up orange when somebody has sent a chat so that you can open it. On a computer, it'll probably be like on your side screen and then you can close it up. Now in the middle is the bright green share screen button. When you go to share screen, this is where some of our kids have been getting a little confused. A teacher might ask a student to share their screen. When you do this, you have to pick the specific thing off your desktop you want to share. So I tend, as you can see from the screen, to have a million things open at once. Um, so I have like Word documents and things on the internet. You need to click the thing that you want to share and it'll get a little blue button or, or a little blue box around it and then click share. You're also, if it's something with sound, you'll also want to hit share computer sound on the left corner of that screen. Yes, right here is where Lindsay's talking about. And then that screen will be shared with the rest of the class. And then either at the top or the bottom, there'll be a bright red spot where it says stop share. And they can go down. Um, there's also some fun reactions. So you can give like a thumbs up and it pops up in your picture. Or you can change the view of how everyone's seen. So speaker view is like this where Allison goes big in the middle. Or gallery view where everyone's in small little um, boxes. So let me see if I can get out of this. As when you're on, if you're on a tablet or a phone, the gallery view may only let you see four or eight people, um, even if there's 20 kids in the class. Um, so don't worry, you can usually scroll through. There'll be either a little arrow at the top or bottom or on the side to go through and see the other pictures. Okay. Um, Oops, sorry. So, some Zoom etiquette. Ms. Deacon? So, um, I wanted to mention one thing about um, when you share something on Zoom really quick before I jump into the Zoom etiquette. When you share something, 
it has to already be open on your desktop before you press share and you can't switch between sharing two things um you have to unshare and or stop share with that red button and then share something new so that's just a tip but um for some zoom etiquette um we do a lot of learning of expectations and routines at school um so everybody knows how to act in the classroom but now our classroom is a computer screen and it's very different we're all in our homes and we want to make it the best learning environment that we can make it um and therefore if we all follow some certain expectations or etiquette things will go smoothly um so these are just some uh suggestions of how to you know act or um, participate uh in when you're doing a zoom session or other online learning platform um we will need consent from every parent for the students to be involved in the um participation of zoom so there was a Google form that was sent out a while back um, for your consent. If you haven't signed that yet, please let us know and we will make sure that you get that link. Um, but most parents have had a chance to sign that. Um, I don't know if you remember at the beginning, we would often ask parents to get into the screen and give permission to be video chatting. Um, so this alleviates that so you don't have to give your permission every single time. Um, we just want it to be safe and secure and know that we have your permission to be doing the online learning. Um, we have teachers recording all of the Zoom meetings, again, for security and also possibly to go back and do some extra learning. So um, please participate appropriately because they'll live in the virtual world forever. Um, computer microphones pick up sounds from all over the house. Um, so just be careful that, you know, whatever language is being used in the background or if somebody is doing a, a project with a hammer and nails, uh, <laughs> maybe choose a time opposite the lessons. We understand that life is crazy right now and things like that might not be able to be avoided. So in that case, just make sure the student is uh, muting themselves um, if there is loud noise happening in the background, except for when they're going to share their comments or questions. It's really simple to mute and unmute yourself. Um, but it's just helpful to everyone's learning if the environment is quiet. Um, let's see. Teachers will probably mute students, um, but you also have the ability to do it yourself. Um, make sure students are dressed appropriately. They don't need to be in uniform, but just school friendly. Um, make sure fully clothed, all that. Um, and using age appropriate language. Uh, oh, and also something that's really helpful is for the students to have like a workstation for themselves, just so that the computer is set in a place, a stable position instead of carrying a phone around. Um, and they'll be more apt to participate in the learning if they're sitting up at a table or somewhere um, comfortable rather than in bed or something. I know I would feel much more lazy if I were still in my bed on my phone as opposed to sitting at the kitchen table with a um, stable computer in front of me. Um, so if you can help them to have sort of a good workspace in front of them, um, they will likely be able to participate more easily and um, pay attention more easily. The focus will be stronger. Um, and <laughs> the kids really, really love to use the chat box. Um, when the Zoom sessions are going on and it's really sweet to follow along. A lot of them will say hello to each other, um, but just be careful and know that uh, the conversations can be seen by everyone unless you're sending a private message. So um, just keep them on topic. The conversations in the chat box or talked about in the meeting in general should just be on topic to keep us at, on pace to get the lesson done. So that yeah, was Sarah just shared. Sarah just shared in the chat that parents are welcome to join at any time in our class. We have a few parents who join from their phones at work and, you know, just have the audio on, you know, we encourage you to be in the background or popping in every once in a while, just to make sure everything is good and your students on task. And like Ms. Lindstrom and Ms. Misenzio were saying, we understand that you can't stop everything going on in your house. So, you know, just make it clear to your students that if there's noise, just mute yourself until you have to share or until the noise stops, just out of, 
politeness for the other students who want to hear what the teacher is saying. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Bradstreet, um, thank you for adding that link. Um, the link for signing consent is in the chat box right now. So if you haven't done that yet, feel free to use that link to sign. Thank you. All right, are we ready for the next slide? We're ready. I think I need to share Google Classroom, Ms. Lindstrom. Oh, um, this is the remind app real quick. Oh, sure, go ahead. So Ms. Um, Kastner has been using the remind app to reach uh, the whole school, which is awesome. So if you haven't added the school-wide code, it's right here. Uh, feel free to connect right now. Um, you will download the app and join Discovery Charter School-wide with that code. And then you'll receive school-wide announcements, including a morning message each day. Um, and you can also use it to connect with Ms. Gessner and the other administrators um, by chatting with them through the app. It's kind of like using text messages. Um, and then also you'll know that your classroom teachers may also use this um, with, a, with their specific classroom, um, or they may be using Dojo or class tag in a very similar way. I want to share one more thing about Zoom too, guys, in case you um, haven't tried this yet. If the pictures of people's faces are covering something on the screen, you can just drag the pictures around, like put your cursor at the black line above the pictures and just drag them to the other side. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so, I mean, she's looking at so many different people. Google Classroom. <laughs> So, uh, Allison, I'm going to stop screen sharing so that you can jump into Google Classroom. Aww. Hi, Matt. Hi, Emily. How are you? Hang on. Um, Rachel. Okay. I, but I go to the Facebook page. Is that the same thing you put on Remind? Pretty much. Okay. Yep. Then we're good. Thank you. I'm not missing anything. Yep. Occasionally, there's an extra reminder. Like, I did a reminder about a half an hour before this. Yeah. Um, but... Generally, you'll catch everything on Facebook, though. Yeah, or Ms. Hartzell will share it through Dojo or Classroom. You know, we all try to disperse information as much as we can. All right, I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to talk a little bit, bit about Google Classroom. So um, I like to start right from the beginning. So I went out to Google.com because, you know, all the Google things are connected. So I'm just going to press sign in. I'm going to sign into an account, um, a student account to show it from your perspective because our end does look a little different. So you're going to just log in with your student's email and password. Now to get onto Google Classroom, you have to be on a discovery email address. So every student has one. If you need help with that login information, shoot a message to um, a staff member, probably your child's teacher, and they will get it from Mr. Bradstreet. So if you click on these little nine, go ahead. Sorry, Ms. Deacon. Those are not actually email addresses but just account addresses, um, right. the students can't actually email from that account. Right, just a login for Google Classroom and stuff. Yes. So there are two ways to get here. You can either just go to classroom.google.com or you can go to Google and press these little icons here and click Classroom. There's also an app if you're on a phone or a tablet. Um, and also I think the Chromebooks have the app right on the screen. So you're going to want to press that you're a student. This is, of course, if you haven't logged into Google Classroom yet, and I, I know a lot of people have. The code is something you have to get from your student's teacher. That's our code. So it's going to let you write in. All right, so here is our Google Classroom. It's going to give you some little information. So the most important parts of the Google Classroom are the stream, which is kind of like the news feed where you see the newest things at the top, um, announcements, and it will show every single assignment too in chronological order. So this is a little bit probably overwhelming. The easier way to see classwork is to click on the classwork tab. Um, for our classroom, and I believe for most classrooms, there are, it's broken into subjects. So we have like ELA, writing, math, and then all the encores. Um, and we have a section for general information. So clicking on any of these will take you to that topic. Um, I feel like I'm going really fast. So if you have a question, throw it in the chat. Um, so I created a test assignment just to show you what it looks like. 
if you click on it once, it'll kind of expand it. But if you click on it again, I'm sorry, if you click on view assignment, it'll open a page like this. Um, so the key to this is that there are different types of assignments. And so the process is a little bit different for each type. Um, if your teacher attaches a Google form, well, let me rewind a little bit. They'll probably have a video here for you to watch. That's usually the first thing you're gonna wanna have your student do. Um, but then there's different types of assignments. So a Google form assignment, you'll just click on the link, answer all the questions. Do we love DCS? Definitely. <laughs> um, and press submit. So the forms are pretty straightforward where you press submit. Now, if you're finding that it's telling you you haven't turned it in, it might be because it wants you to go back to the assignment, which will take you a minute, and then press this turn in button right here. So that's what signals to the teacher that you have done the assignment. Um, but if you don't press the turn in button, the teacher should still see that you've submitted the form or the question um, for the assignment. So the other way your teacher might attach something over here, which could be a Google Doc or a Google Slides, which is like a PowerPoint that's editable. So same process if you click on that and then you do whatever the task is, type your name here, type my name. Um, for this one, we got privacy thing. You're gonna wanna press turn in here. Um, and then you might even still need to go back to the assignment and press turn in. So that turn in button is really like the, the key and I think what's tripping people up a little bit. Now I've, I found from our class that even still when people are pressing that, sometimes it tells them that their student didn't turn in the work, but nine times out of 10, we're still seeing the work on our end, the teacher's end. So I would encourage you if it's saying that you haven't turned in an assignment, just to reach out to the teacher and say, hey, can you see this work from today or not? Because in my experience, we've seen it pretty much every time. Um, so please do ask Ms. them. Egan? I think Mrs. Lorraine has a question. Okay, what's up? I have two questions. So when you click on the assignment to do the assignment, um, sometimes it won't let us type anything in for the answers. Mm, okay, so if it's not letting you type anything, that's something that the teacher needs to go back and change the privacy settings. And usually that's just like an error in forgetting to hit that button. So again, I'm just gonna say, reach out to the teacher and tell them that you can't type anything. I know I've done it by mistake. There's like a little tiny button that says students can view or students can edit and that's where that setting will change. Gotcha. And then the other issue we've been having is, as a lot of the, the videos they're sending, we can't see. It says we haven't logged on to a Google app or something. Are the videos that they're sending linked to YouTube or are they on a Google Drive? You know, um, is it linking you to YouTube? I, yeah, it's a YouTube one. So then I'll click on it, but then it tells me I'm not on the Google Drive and I can't view it. But we're on the Google Classroom, so I don't understand how it's not working. I don't there know if that. Be a couple of different issues there. So if they're posting okay. videos that are saved onto Google Drive instead of YouTube. Um, there could be privacy settings that need to be changed there. If you're on YouTube and you can't view it, I would check that you're logged into um, the student's Google account. Matt, if you want to jump in, if you have any more advice about that, that seems like a privacy setting issue too. Okay. So I would let the teacher know that you're having a hard time and they might be able to change the settings. Okay. <laughs> Because, yeah, that's, that's one of Isaiah's biggest problems as to why a lot isn't turned in is I can't. And then we spend like three hours trying to figure it out. And then it's just like, okay, Isaiah, go take a break. We just all have to walk away from the computer. Yeah. And I, I would yeah. say that your teachers are probably understanding of that, too, because we're all trying to figure out this technology stuff. And sometimes we're just hitting the wrong buttons and it's on our end. So... Um, okay. Don't feel like you're bothering the teachers to reach out and just say, hey, I can't, I can't get to this video or I can't turn in this assignment because we're all and just trying can... to, go ahead. I'm sorry, Miss Egan, go ahead. No, go ahead. You're fine. I, I was just going to say, if I can add, I can just share um, 
that I can give this feedback to the teaching staff in general um, because maybe they're not realizing that they're clicking the form and it's not editable by students. Um, so I will share the feedback that we kind of take away from parents tonight with the general staff because that's a, an unnecessary frustration that we don't want you folks to have as families. And it might just be an oversight. Honestly, the teacher didn't realize it, but we can ask them to pay more attention to that. Okay. Absolutely. And the yeah, anytime side. something like that comes up, feel free to let any staff member know because um, you might not be the only ones having the problem. So we definitely want to resolve that as quickly as we can. Yeah. And Sarah just said in the chat too, feel free to send a text on remind to her or to Ashley and just let somebody know that you need help. And I'm sure somebody can help in one way or another. It's kind of like we're all troubleshooting it too. And so we have to take it kind of issue by issue. And I wish I could give like a easy fix, but it is a little bit tricky. Yeah. Um, yes. Sarah asked me to show. Can I say the, something real quick the else before the yeah. page? Please do. So um, Beth, the other thing when you are like right at the assignment and it is not opening, there's this spot right here where you can add a class comment. Um, I, I'm not sure on the student end because their emails are not real emails, but us as teachers, we get an email every single time there's a comment. So okay. if you like the second you're at that assignment and it is not opening, feel free to just leave a quick comment that says like, I'm stuck, this is an opening. And they will see not only the comment, but probably get an email at the same time. So that's yeah, a okay. pretty quick way to like, just notify the teacher. Um, okay. And they will yeah. see that right away. Thanks, Ms. Lynch. And there's two spots. So if you add a comment here right under the assignment, that'll be like a public one. If you comment over in the private comment, just the teacher can see that. Um, but we get notified notified either way. Okay. I mean, we have the apps on our phone and get like a pop-up notification. So someone yeah. should get back to you. And if you're finding that that's, um, those are going unanswered, let someone know and, and we'll make sure that, or Ashley or Sarah will reach out and make sure that those are getting answered. Okay, okay so I'm gonna go back into our classroom. So the way that most teachers, I believe are setting up lessons, um, the YouTube video should be linked to the lesson. So like this is an ELA lesson from today for our class. Um, so you can just click right on that and it will pop up a video right here. You can also press open and go to the YouTube website to watch the videos. Um, either way will work. I don't think there's much of a difference. You can also search Discovery Charter School on YouTube and we will pop up. Hey, look, first on the search, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the YouTube page, you're gonna wanna go to playlists and then you can find your grade level, first grade, third grade, or your Encore um, PE, Performing Arts, Visual Arts. You'll also find Community Circle here. And teachers should be linking these things in Google Classroom, but if ever you can't find them, they are all here for your viewing. Does anyone have any questions so far? A lot Can of- Can you show that one more time, Ms. Deacon, from, the, from Google Classroom, the two different ways? Sure. So you can click directly on the video and you can watch it right here. So it'll immediately start playing. There's Ms. Deshalay. Hi, Ms. Deshalay. <laughs> or you can press this little open button here and go to the website. I do, probably recommend clicking the open button and going to the website because if you're here watching it and you click off, it's going to go away. Tuesday, oh, she's Tuesday, playing Tuesday, twice. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. <laughs> and we are going to continue right on with our learning. Yeah, so <laughs> I would recommend going to the website and watching the video so you don't accidentally click out of them like in the middle and have to start back over and find your place. All right, I can't see the chat, so I can't see if anybody has a question. There it is. Um, yes. All good. We're good so far. Okay. Um, you can see people in Google Classroom. Now this doesn't serve too much of a purpose other than seeing that all the teachers are connected, all the administrative or administration is connected, um, on-course teachers are all connected, and then you can see who's in your class. But again, they can't email or any of that, so nothing really to see there. Um, am I missing anything? 
Um, in Google Classroom, I think that's pretty good. Um, oh, I know some of the older students might have like multiple Google Classrooms depending on subjects. So okay. if you need to see that over on the far side where Ms. Um, Allison's mouse is are the three little lines. Right here next to the name of the class. You can click, click classes. classes. You click that. And it'll take you back to a screen. Actually, Allison, if do you want to stop screen sharing for a second and okay. I will show you mine, which is a little crazy to look at. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> this is what a screen could look like. I know sixth grade does a Google Classroom for each subject. Um, so that's just how you get back to looking at the different classrooms. Now, for most of you, you probably just have one class here. Um, but if you need to get back, it's those three little lines and it takes you back to the different classes. Um, I want to show one more thing, Ms. Lynch, whenever you're finished. Okay, so there is a way to see like all of your students' assignments. Now, if this confuses you, please ignore it. But if you're looking for something that you have previously worked on, sorry about my dog, um, you can click on this little folder here and it'll take you to your students' Google Drive, which will have a copy of things that they've worked on. So anything that you've opened from Google Classroom, so like that test assignment that I was typing on is there. Um, this is helpful if they've turned something in and wanna go back to it, because once you press turn in, I don't know that you can get to it again through the original assignment. So that's just something to know if it's helpful to you. And Google Classroom should save as does save as you're like typing in a Google Doc. Um, it saves the progress as you go. So don't yeah. feel like you have to um, help them remember to save the document like you would normally if you were doing like a Word document on your computer. It does self-save. Any questions on Google Classroom or other spots in Google Classroom where you are getting stuck? Rachel? We had to draw a B. We can't do it on the, that. So she drew it on a piece of paper. I don't know how to get the picture to Miss. Well, actually, both of them, Miss Dishale and Miss Deacon, had her draw yesterday. One was another day, and today she had to draw. How do I? Like, like she had to draw for you. She drew me a face. Like, how do we show that you did it? Like, I don't know how to do that. That's too technical. Okay. Yeah. So, um, specifically speaking to that, one of Misty Chalet's assignment is kind of just an enrichment of the lesson. And so, if you want to send a picture on Class Dojo to Miss Hartzell, um, or you can, I think you can post it in a comment on Google Classroom. Don't worry about it if it's hard for you, though. Great. But how do you do that? Like, because we're oh. on a computer. So, how do you take a picture of it on a computer? Yeah. On the Chromebooks. Um, yeah. I'll start with just like a general Chromebook because I've watched sorry. through. No, no that's, sorry. That's, that's your Chromebook right here. Yep, perfect. Yep. So the Chromebook actually has a camera on it that you can take pictures with. And it'll okay. save the picture file onto the Chromebook. So, um, so I'm such a visual person. So Chromebooks have the little like search oval at the bottom. Little magnifying glass type thing. Yeah, okay. it's either a magnifying glass or a long white oval. And you can actually just type in camera. Okay. And a camera app should pop up for you to click on. Yes. Perfect. So click it and open the camera app. Yeah, I see me. Perfect. Oh, so I can put the picture. And then so I can put the picture. See, that's yeah. me. Yep. I could put the picture and take a picture. It's the same yeah. thing too. See, it's I'll not that hard, but it's hard for me. Thanks. Well, and well, we understand. And um, if you, you don't necessarily think of your laptop having like a camera on it because that's not right. something you necessarily put together. So you can, that picture will save um, on the Chromebook 
okay. into the Google. So Allison's going to show you how to upload it onto Google Classroom here. Oh, thank you. And I apologize. There's somebody walking by and the dog is barking. Um, but if you go right into the stream of the Google Classroom and you press add and press file, you will be able to upload anything that's on your computer. So you'll see all your pictures right here. Probably it'll probably open you right up. If not, okay. click around and just find the picture. And then you just press upload and then submit to post the comment. Yep. Um, and Rachel, I think you were also talking about like Art Sonia for the artwork assignments that I've been yeah. getting. Um, yeah. That, that you can, you can do two things. You can keep it streamlined and just take the picture and put it right into Google Classroom. Um, I'm connected to every single grade level's Google Classroom, um, just like Allison just showed you. We, in the classroom when we're at, at school, um, the students use a website called Artsonia. Um, I, I, I left it up so that if kids wanted to do it at home, they could because especially some of the older ones have used it a lot in the classroom, so they already know. But that's just something that if kids remembered how to use it, they're welcome to use it. Don't feel overwhelmed by it. Um, it's just there so that they can add to their, they, it keeps a little artwork portfolio for them. Um, okay. But you can definitely, Google Classroom is where everybody is checking things. So just add the file. Um, my art assignments are right in Ms. Hartzell's Google Classroom. So she can just add that picture right there as well. Okay, um, thank you. The, I was confused with that too. So that makes it easier to do the Google Classroom part. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're ever unsure, just put it all in Google Classroom and we will find it. <laughs> um, okay. we'll see it. And, and, and we can't stress enough that if, we don't want this to be a burden on you. We want to make this as user-friendly as possible. And if it's not, just let the teacher know what you're having a difficult time with because they might have a quick solution. And I, I'm sure they're more than willing to even get on Zoom with you just to talk through the, the issue you're having so that you know moving forward, you're not spending so much time on something. We, we want this to be easier than harder for sure. But I don't want you to think that I haven't dealt with Ms. Hartzell, Ms. B. They have been very, very, very helpful. I can't ask a question that. every time I need to ask a question. There's other families. <laughs> They've been true. so helpful. They're amazing. They are. But do you feel like you can reach out to somebody, whether it's us or it's Sarah or it's Ashley or me or Miss Dechalet? Yeah. We all understand that this is new. It's new for us. And sometimes it's just a matter of the teacher not realizing, you know, they need to click a button or realizing they haven't shown how exactly to upload a picture so like that's something we didn't think about right we didn't think to explain how to upload the picture to google classroom so thank you for bringing that up and i i think that teachers will get back to you as soon as they can right so if, don't feel like you're bothering them if they're with another family they'll, they'll no i don't feel like i'm bothering them at all but <laughs> i don't there's just so much a person can put on one person i still have a conscience um <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a pain <laughs> no. Um, the other thing that we are trying to do is offer some more like different office, like office hours. Um, so the on-course teachers, so myself, Mr. Sinekropi for performing arts, and then the two PE teachers. Um, we made some office hours because we know, you know, every morning we can't be in every single classroom's crew. There's going to be questions like about Artsonia or about you know, some of the things that we're trying to um, put out there for our students to use. Um, so we posted some of those hours in Google Classroom um, with our Zoom links there, so you can just click right on it. So, you know, if if you have a student that wants to use Artsonia but is getting kind of stuck on it, like I can definitely walk them through how to use it. I've already walked many students through um, how to use it already, and a lot of them comes right back to them because we used it at school. Um, so we do, we are trying to set up some more office hours. I know SEL has some office hours that got sent out. Um, and we're kind of curious, people can respond in the chat. Ms. Kastner just said, would a weekly tech support office hour be helpful? You know, if you're, if you're getting stuck still on something. Um, so feel free to respond in the chat if you think that would be helpful. And then we can look into setting up a time where 
you know, just the little questions that you don't, you know, want to always be calling the teacher and messaging, you know, maybe we can help you walk through them during a tech support time. Are there any other questions or things that people are getting stuck on? We know there's a lot out there, so any small questions? Yeah, we know this is tricky, so <laughs> feel free to unmute yourself and ask um, if you don't want to type it in the chat also. And while parents are thinking about any questions, I just want to reiterate that Sarah and I and the whole team are just so appreciative of families and their efforts to get this, all of this technology in place. We know that it's so difficult and it, we feel awful that it's taking families three hours to troubleshoot. Um, but we do appreciate your diligence with this. Um, I think we're all feeling like if this really goes, this closure goes until the end of the school year, we don't want our kids to have that many gaps. So we are just so appreciative of everybody's efforts um, to do anything. And even if that means you're only doing a few things a day and you can't get to everything, that's okay. Yeah. So thank you really so much for your partnership and your child's education. Yeah, thank you. I would not call myself tech savvy. I've learned a lot. I had uh, some sessions with Mr. Bradstreet to learn how to make a Google Doc and had to learn Remind and Zoom. It's been uh, a struggle, but everybody <laughs> has been very helpful because it is tough. I get it. I still don't know how to use all this stuff, so I learned a lot from this. Thank you. <laughs> like okay. Ashley said, we'll record it and post it up. So I know I went pretty fast and a lot of information all at once. So if you want to go okay. back and rewatch it, please do. And we also know that a lot of people are using a lot of different devices. So what one teacher might think is easy on like a Google Classroom and you're using like a different home computer. So we know there's a lot of different devices being used and technology looks different on all of those. So it might even be something simple like you told me to click this button and now I'm on my iPad and I cannot find this button anywhere. Like please just reach out to us and let us know because we know there's a lot that everyone's trying to figure out all at once and every platform looks a little different when you're on it on different devices. So please just let us know. Thank you. And Miss Dame and I are working on plans to do like a weekly lunch with leaders or something so we can open up time where parents can join us and, you know, chat casually, I guess. Um, about things and we can try to answer questions. This is something we really wanted to do while we were in school, but we're going to try to get some information out and get this plan. So, I mean, if we can keep anything strong, we can keep our relationship strong. So, right. Okay. Oh, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put the three of us. Um, Alice and Lindsay and myself, our emails on the screen real quick. Yeah, feel free to reach out to any of us at any time. Oh, um, I mean, oh, that's good right there. If you want to even just take a picture of the screen, just so you have oh, that's it. that's a good idea. Miss <laughs> <Lindstrom, laughs> yeah, Lindstrom, <laughs> Lindstrom, could you even copy those and put them into the chat if anybody wants to copy and paste to them? Yes. Picture taken. Perfect. Um, feel free to reach out to the three of us um, at any point for any tech questions. Um, Sarah put her email in there too. Yep. Pretty much every school teacher email should be their first initial and then last name. But um, uh, And if you go on to the Discovery website, it lists the staff and it has everybody's email there too. You can just click on it. Good point. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, and I honestly check my email all day, every day. So day like, <laughs> we're we're here. 
Um, so yeah, and like I said, like like we said, any small. Oh, Allison, you beat me. Um, I can't copy and paste, so I'm typing real quick. Um, any small question, like we really don't want you dwelling on anything in here. So just shoot us quick emails, and we can help you out. Yeah. And if ever it's feeling frustrating, take a break for the day. <laughs>